actually off for you now. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me just thank you for being with us. Uh, first, just want to offer on behalf of the First Lady, the Kemp family, and myself, our thoughts and prayers are certainly going out to all those that have been affected by Hurricane and now Tropical Storm Debbie. Uh, as you know, there were four fatalities in the state of Florida in a tragic loss of life of a 19-year-old in Moultrie, Georgia. And we just want to offer our thoughts and prayers to all those that have been affected. And certainly our prayers uh, for our fellow Georgians, our neighbors uh, to the south in Florida and above us in South Carolina that are feeling the effects of this storm like our folks are. Uh, with me today, we've got Director Stallings of the Georgia Emergency Management Agency, who's leading our efforts here at the State Operations Center. We've got the Department of Public Safety, Colonel Hitchens, uh, the Georgia National Guard, General Wilson, Commissioner McMurray in the Department of Transportation, Commissioner Rabin, the Department of Natural Resources, uh, Director Lowermore and the Georgia Forestry Commission, and then I know Commissioner uh, Tyler Harper, our Agriculture Commissioner, uh, General John King, our Insurance Commissioner, and Attorney General Chris Carr have all been working on storm response and helping us uh, with pre-storm activities and are actively on the ground helping our team. So I want to thank them for their support. Also, just want to uh, thank the Federal Emergency Management Agency. I've been trading phone calls with Administrator Criswell, but she reached out just to make sure we had the assets we need. Uh, I know Director Stallings has been in touch with her folks and they are embedded here with us in the Operations Center and we're grateful for that. I had a call yesterday with Rear Admiral Schofield of the United States Coast Guard discussing uh, our ports and their response uh, to help us with other activities uh, post-storm moving through, so I certainly appreciate that. As you all know, Debbie made landfall, uh, landfall as a category one hurricane in Florida yesterday and continues to move through our state into South Carolina is now a tropical storm. Uh, we've had a heavy impact on southeast Georgia with heavy winds and certainly a lot of rainfall. Uh, just to recap what we've done on the state side so far, at my direction, Director Stallings activated this state operations center over the weekend to monitor the storm's process and coordinate with all the relative state agencies as well as our local officials down south. Uh, we issued a state emergency on Saturday, making state resources available to local governments and organizations within the impacted area. I issued an additional executive order yesterday enabling the Georgia National Guard to deploy up to 2,000 National Guardsmen if needed. Last night, I pre-approved positioning of a couple of hundred Guardsmen to south and southeast Georgia so that we can move in quickly if needed. Last night, we also had a pre-disaster emergency declaration approved by the president for evacuation and shelter only. This does not include storm response funding or other things. It's just to help us with evacuation and, and shelter. Uh, our assets are continuing to be staged and our personnel are embedded in uh, local emergency operations centers in the affected areas. We've got the Department of Public Safety, Department of Natural Resources, Forestry Commission folks, Georgia DOT teams ready to deploy and are being deployed right now in affected communities. We continue to coordinate with our utility providers who have been absolutely great partners, uh, Georgia Power and our EMCs. Uh, as well as other contractors who are responding as we speak to prepare for and repair uh, power outages. Right now we have roughly 47,000 people uh, without power, but while the storm has uh, left us a little bit of a hole, if you will, in some of the affected areas, there's a lot of work going on right now to get power back on uh, before this storm potentially circles back and dumps a lot more rain on us. So I just want to thank our utility partners. One request that I have for our citizens in the affected areas, uh, I hope you would be patient with us. Uh, do not let this storm lull you to sleep as a lot of affected areas right now are not experiencing rain and high winds, uh, but both models are showing that rain will come back, uh, potentially in the worst case scenario in a big way. Uh, give us time to clear roads, get power crews in, uh, help with any emergency 
efforts that we need to do in the local communities that the local communities are doing and just try to stay off the roads today if you can. Uh, the quicker we can get in there and get work done today while the rain is away uh, will be helpful to us. Also, uh, have patience with our first responders and our utility crews. Uh, as you know, our last storm, we lost uh, some hardworking Georgians from the Department of Transportation. They're responding to uh, storms and also alignment. So this is dangerous work for them. And if we can keep the roadways clear, allow them uh, to deal with as less headaches as we can, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, the ground being very saturated, we've seen not only here, but in other parts of uh, our joining neighboring states where trees have fallen, hitting vehicles. Uh, so if you don't have to be out, just please don't be out. Be weather aware. Uh, be in places in your home that are as protected as you can be from the potential of falling trees uh, and the kind of devastation that they can bring. We expect the area, you know, 50 to 70 miles from Savannah to continue to be affected by this storm places obviously Chatham County, Effingham, Scriven and others that are in that area. The two models that we're watching and Will Langston's with us, the state meteorologist that, that can talk to this uh, further if we need to. Um, the two models that we're watching, the best case scenario we're going to get another four to five inches of rain on top of what we already had. The worst case scenario, we may have another up to eight inches of rain. So uh, unfortunately, I don't believe the storm is done with us yet. Uh, even though South Carolina is getting hit harder than we are right now, uh, we know that this is going to come back around and we'll be prepared for that. But I just want to make sure our citizens uh, understand that this event is not over. And Director Stallings and General Wilson will speak more to what their efforts have been. And then certainly we have the whole team up here that can answer questions. The last thing I'd also like to say is our uh, hardworking former farmers and agribusiness folks out there, we have heard from them as well. We know uh, that this weather event is going to affect uh, a lot of the crops that we have in the ground, uh, cotton, peanuts, our pecans, and certainly timber. We're aware of that. We'll continue to monitor those efforts as I know uh, Commissioner Harper is doing on the ground right now. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Director Stallings. He'll go to General Wilson, and then we'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Governor. Um, First Lady, for being here with us today. We appreciate your efforts and the quick response. As the Governor mentioned, he signed a state of emergency on Saturday, which allowed us to move a lot of resources. I've spoken with several of you over the last couple of days, and, and we've talked through some of those resource allocations, but certain things that you don't think about, we're very proud of the efforts, are or just by pre-positioning a lot of those currently around the state, we've got 18 water treatment facilities that are running off of generator. And that doesn't sound like a whole lot of effort, but you can't move those things during storms. And so by the governor signing these things early, that's just one resource allocation that we were able to get out there in advance. So folks have running water, they're able to get wastewater moving and, and keep uh, yesterday uh, behind us and moving forward uh, with some recovery efforts already. We have a lot of state resources out ready to respond. So if you have needs, uh, as, you've, as you ask, as the governor mentioned, stay off the roads so we can get our folks there. I understand it's very interesting. You want to get out there and see what damage actually occurred. You want to go check the roads out, see what trees fell, go check on property. I understand that, but the more we can keep the roads clear so that our emergency responders can get in there, uh, the better off we are. And the last thing I'll say uh, from the State Operations Center is just because, as the governor mentioned, the center of this storm has created a little bit of downtime for us to get in there, we stand ready and, and are going to continue to monitor. So we're not going to let uh, this little bit of downtime make us think that we're out of the woods yet. So there's still a lot of water to come. We do have a lot of resources out there, and we are ready to handle whatever's coming. With that, I'll turn it over to Major General Wilson. With Sir, thank you. Sir. Hey, well, good morning. Hey, uh, so so uh, so this morning uh, we've got about uh, 300 soldiers and airmen that are uh, postured forward in, in our uh, local armies uh, in, from southeast Georgia all the way uh, north to Augusta, just standing by to provide whatever support uh, is required. We're certainly, our capability and capacity is scalable. The governor's authorized up to 
2,000 guardsmen if needed. So we're we're uh, we're ready to respond uh, if required. We're really focusing on uh, manpower, additional manpower. We've got lots of high wheeled uh, vehicles, and we've got uh, a pretty robust logistics capability within the the Georgia National Guard. So we're certainly uh, ready to provide whatever support is required. All right, thanks. Anybody got any questions for any of this group or myself? Update on the port. Yeah, ports are closed right now, Brunswick, uh, Savannah, and Charleston. Uh, and from what Director Stallings is saying, Charleston's probably going to be closed for a while. They're getting a lot of, a lot of rain right now. But that's what we'll continue to work with the Coast Guard on. Uh, also, you know, bridges with DOT inspections and other things. And uh, But right now they're closed. Governor, as the sun's coming up, is it, is it turn out to be what you expected, more of a, a flooding event and not a wind event? Is that maybe Director Sawyer? Talk about that. Yeah, do you want to yeah. speak more of that or Will? Yeah, can. and as Will, as Will has briefed, it has definitely been a rain event. We never anticipated high winds for extended periods of time. We knew this was going to be a water event. So that's the majority of how our resources were, were prepared to respond. We just copious amounts of rain. I know you were saying that right now, and it's hard to predict, but the rain with recovery could be weeks. With where we're at right now, is it still looking like that? And Governor, will this state of emergency continue through that time? Well, I, I don't. I may let Will speak to how long he thinks the event. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of flooding will be a day, two days, three days after is, is you know, rivers and creeks crest, and uh, we see the full effects of the form uh, of the storm. But we'll have the state of emergency as long as we need it. I can guarantee you that. And this team will be working every single day as long as we need it. I mean, I think we've been very fortunate in some ways that we're getting a little break right now and are able to go in uh, and the loss of power that we had with some of the stronger winds, hopefully we won't see any more of that. It'll just be a rain event, which there's a lot of issues with that, very dangerous with trees falling uh, and other things that people need to be very aware of. But hopefully if we can get back in today, and I know our power crews, I know Kim Green with Georgia Power is on the ground today, our EMCs are working, our contractors, so if we can get power back on, you know, hopefully we don't have a storm event where people are without power and, you know, especially the ability to cool themselves in these hot days, uh, you know, for, for a week or two weeks like we've seen with other storms. So in that way, we're fortunate. But we also, you know, I think the message from Director Stallings and the whole team is like, this is not over. I know it seems like it may be in some ways, but there's a, a, a really bad model that shows us getting another eight inches of rain, which will have some devastating effects in, in a lot of ways, and we just need to be prepared for that. Will, do you want to speak more to what you're seeing on the weather? So as the governor mentioned, there's some very reliable models that are showing a better scenario for us, and that would be reflected in the National Hurricane Center's track, where by Thursday, the, the center of the storm that's currently off of our coast will be moving into the Carolinas, and we'll start to see the rain move out of Georgia. Um, if that were the case, we would see another four or five inches of rainfall in Savannah from the wraparound moisture before that happens. Um, there are also reliable models, one in particular the American GFS model, which has had a good handle on this storm from the beginning. That's showing a potential stalling off the coast and then on Thursday potentially the center moving back into Georgia, which would create a worst case scenario for us where we could see another eight, nine inches of rain in and around the Savannah area. Um, both models are showing us clear by Saturday, so um, the question really is, are we going to start seeing conditions rapidly improve by Thursday or by later on Friday into Saturday? But this weekend looks good for recovery efforts and certainly into early next week. Initially, there had been some concern about catastrophic flooding, and particularly in communities that had not seen that level of flooding before. Are you still looking at that based on the models? Um, as you said, you don't want people to be lulled to a false sense of security. Yeah, to me, it looks like the, the threat of catastrophic flooding in Georgia is probably much less likely now than we thought it could be a couple of days ago. I do think that the catastrophic threat has now shifted more into South Carolina. But, um, for instance, in Savannah during Hurricane Matthew in 2016, they saw 17 inches of rainfall. That's more in line with what we're thinking for a worst case scenario at this point. They're already halfway there. So if we do see that storm track further inland over the next couple of days, we could start to approach that level. So it wouldn't be historic, it wouldn't be catastrophic, but it would certainly be a high-end event. Have there been evacuations and are you expecting or expecting that? So 
There have been some medical facilities, uh, nursing homes, ex um, senior uh, living facilities on Tybee Island and a couple places that we did have evacuations not ordered but highly recommended and supported. So we were uh, you know, ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure in those scenarios so we were there but we didn't have a uh, an evacuation order in place. Director, if it's that worst case, where what kind of flooding do you expect? Is it, is it inland? Is it on the, just on the coast or just low-lying areas or where would the what would that actually mean, like logistically, or even getting supplies, and what does that mean? Yeah, with a slow-moving system like this, where those heavier bands start to set up, which is difficult to see before it happens, we would expect to see a flash flooding threat. As the governor mentioned, the rivers are forecast to crest in southeast Georgia over the next couple of days, so we could see some moderate to major river flooding as well. And in any urban areas closer to Savannah, you can also get some buildup and some quick rising flooding waters with that. It sounds like people won't really be able to be boots on the ground with recovery and obviously power is still moving until about Saturday to your prediction. Well, I'll, I'll let Director Stone speak to that because I think we got boots on the ground now in some places. It's just we're having to come in behind the storm. Um, so we're able to work in areas now when you see on the, the radar where it's not raining um, and you don't have the green bands right there. I mean, there's power crews out that are working. Um, if the winds get too high, they, they can't work in that environment in bucket trucks. Uh, but right now, I think they are out there working restoring powers. The issue is if the storm moves back and heavy rains come back in and they're unable to work. So that's why we're asking people to be patient with us, try to stay off the roads, let us get in there, uh, let the DOT and Forestry Commission and DNR strike teams or chainsaws get in there and clear the roads so we get the utility companies in there, uh, get emergency vehicles in there. And, and do what we need to do if there's any kind of search and rescue that we need to do uh, either now or in the future that we're able to do that and let us get as much as we can done before this storm comes back and hits us again. Hopefully, you know, hopefully it doesn't do that. Uh, but we have to prepare and, and warn people that it's likely that that is going to happen. Uh, but we'll, as, as long as it's safe to work, we'll have people on the ground doing that work. Governor, uh, you mentioned some across that you're monitoring. Can you have any losses at this point? No, no way to tell. I mean, we're just keeping our fingers crossed right now. I mean, it's just going to depend on what area they are, how much rain they've got, and what stage the crop is in, and, you know, what, what, the, what kind of wind damage they had. And, you know, that's something that uh, Commissioner Harper's working on now, and we'll stay in touch with his team, but very preliminary to, for us to know any, any kind of damage or figures yet. Oh, have there been any search and rescue efforts or anyone needing high water rescue or anything like that? Yeah. Not at this point. Just the one death in the door. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, everybody. We'll keep you updated. Oh, man. Yeah, sure, thank you.